All right, I kind of went a little crazy here, but bear with me. So, um, I made this. Let me just show you first. So, hold on. Let me just show you first. So, here's this. We've got all these random types and colors and everything. So, there's three. the first three blocks determine the color of the fourth block. Okay, so you can go up with your gray, green, red, green, and blue. Okay, that determines the color of this block which you can then come along and change the color of any block. Okay, and then if you've changed the color of any block, you can cycle through. Instead of random gems, you get the colored uh, random gems. <laughs> so let's say I want to change it again. So we come up here, we take out the blue. Okay, and then we go up with, it's yellow now. So we go here, cycle through, and then we got yellow. You can still cycle through purple it doesn't mean that you're changing the color. So the right click and the left click do different things here. So let's show you all this now. So everything happens, and this changed my paradigm a little bit, inside the mouse button callback function. Okay, so if you right or left click and it presses down, this is done to find the nearest point that's clicked on. So that doesn't matter if you're right or left click, we want to know the nearest point. Okay. So if the nearest index is less than num blocks, we don't want to go beyond the end of the vertices, and which the vertices I had to add different. Uh, uh, I had to add a float type and a color vector three. So now vertices is a structure, and I made num blocks be equal to an unsigned constant unsigned integer. Okay, so and then they're initialized. I know I'm, I'm kind of going through this the way I did it again. But anyway, so the blocks are all initialized. The first four, 0, 1, 2, and 3, are the type equal to 5. And otherwise the type is equal to a random 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. Okay? And then the color of all of them are set to 0. Okay, so what that does is the first three, zero, one, two, and three, first four, are set to type five. So they have the color just explicitly displayed just like the uh the, the, the you know the colors that we saw just now. And then if not, then they go into this decision, okay, which decides it I made another function to decide whether to go to the random gems with a false and then just doesn't matter or to go with true and send in the color, which is why you see the difference. If it's false, that means it's random colors. If it's true, then it means it takes this color and it randomizes just that color across the uh, grid of the cube grid thingy. Anyways, <laughs> so that means if the color is equal to zero, it does the random. <coughs> Excuse me. Otherwise, if it's a color that we've specified by programming, you know, the first three blocks and getting the fourth color block, then it does the random gems across the thing right there. Okay, and then the other one, let's see, what else is there? Um, so I did have to change the VAO, so I added another attribute, okay? So um, the first um, attribute is just the float, and then the second is three floats, so that's four floats, and that's why this this is the stride, and so it's four times the size of float, and then this is the offset where you start to read the data from for each particular one. Uh, data set. Anyways, so that means I added a location up here, the layout location. Okay, so here's the on off, and then there's the V color that comes through. And the V color just gets output as F color, just down here, F color equals V color, and then it goes out. And then it comes back in here, and it's actually wasn't visible, but up here in vector 3, F color. Okay, and still got the on off too up there. So, and that's where this F color comes from is we're sending it through from the main function. So what we're doing in the main function is we're changing, <coughs> excuse me, we're changing the type, and then for those first three blocks we're modifying the color, and that's what happens with the uh, input here. And so the color, like let's say we left click, so here we are in the function again, so we're getting the nearest point, and then inside here, if the nearest index is less than the number of blocks, which, you know, the nearest point is going to be less than the number of blocks, so it's going to be one of them we choose. So then I just broke it down. I don't even care if it's pressed because we know a button was pressed because we checked for that up here, right here, action equals press. So now we want to know, distinguish between what to do if the left button is pressed or the right button is pressed. Okay, so if the left button is pressed, we go into here and we do all this stuff. So again, based on the nearest point, if it's 0, 1, or 2, then we up the red, green, or the blue with this little increment of the 
That's why when I click on it, it gets brighter and brighter. But then when it gets to one, it just resets to zero again. So you can cycle through the colors, and you can I can set this offset to be whatever. Right now I've got it so that there's 16 different um, variations of red, green, and blue, and that gets um, 16 to the third power, I think, uh, colors. <clears throat> but we can go 256 and get 256 to the third power colors, which I think I'll probably do here soon. But so type um, down here three does nothing because that's that that's that fourth block that because three is set to the color of vertices zero, one, and two. You see, and that's done e any time that you um, change zero, one, or two. We want to update three. So the fourth block gets its color updated, and then we just ignore the fourth block. If we click on it, we don't do anything. And then down here, if it's greater than the fourth block, then it does just the normal type plus equals one, cycles up to five. If it goes beyond five, it goes back to two, and that's why we get that solid. We get the solid and then the different cube block things, uh, cube grid things. Anyways, um, if we right click, then we specify type five or type one. Type one is the one where it's discarded, so that's black. Type five is the type where it takes the current color that's in, um, that's takes the current color that's in the um, fourth block, the one that's been programmed from the first three, and it sets the color of that block to that color, and then it sets it to type five, which will read the color and then send that through to the platform uh, function, which just puts the platform like a little gem on the thing. So anyways, again, this is what we do. So the first block, we cycle up the red. And then we can program red on all these. We can choose to left-click once we change them to red. Whoops, I right-click there. That should go red. Yeah, there we go. See? And then if we want to get rid of the red and go blue or green, We'll go green for a little bit. We just come in here and do some green. And we right so so right click places it, and then left click modifies. And I can put all kind of different types in there that I've already found and figured out and had people show me how to do. So that's really cool. And then we'll just keep going up with the green, get rid of it. Now we'll go to blue because we like blue. And then here we go with blue. We can change the color, get the grid in there. Whoops. And again, take out the color, and it cycles through the random. Put the color in, and it cycles through that color. This is the basis for the 2D map that I'm going to be working on. We're going to easily turn this into the 3D map and do like a Minecraft-style thing. So stay tuned for that, and thanks for watching.